what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV and today I'm building the bench for the water reservoirs for the 10 gallon Nano. Right now we're heading to Lowe's, hashtag Team Lowe's. That's where you go find me if I'm looking for something for the tank. I need to build something, that's, that's where I'm at. We're gonna track down some wood and uh, get to build it. to let the uh, creative process take place inside of Lowe's where all the wood is you know uh, basically I just come with whatever whatever the dimensions are in the idea of what I want to build and then kind of find the materials for it once I get there so my idea is that it will have vertical lines I'm sorry not vertical lines horizontal lines all the way around it and I'm thinking one by four would be a good uh, material to use for it. I don't want to go overly expensive either um, on a nice wood like oak or you know something like that because it's going to get painted. So um, I want something cheap like pine um, and sturdy like pine. So I think we're going to go with pine and um, we're going to find one by fours and then we're going to need to find the, the right amount that we're going to need and so that's where the measurements come into place. We'll always overshoot because Lowe's has a great return policy, so I'll just uh, return whatever I don't need. So here's why I say it. I don't exactly know what I'm gonna get until I get here. One, I'm not a pro. <laughs> Number two, yeah, I kinda have to think things through and visualize them. So. I'm actually thinking instead of one by fours, uh, because an actual size tip, if you're not, um, you know, construction or like, you know, a builder, and you want to start doing these things, is that wood, um, when they give you the measurement, so a one by four, is actually three quarter inch uh, by three and a half inches in actual uh, measurements. So it's important that you realize that when you're building something and you've got your exact measurements. So for instance, I want it to be 16 inches high. Well, if I go by one by four and I say, oh, well, I only need four of them, that's wrong because it's actually three and a half inches. I would actually need five of them, but then I would overshoot it and I'd have to cut it down and I'd end up with one slit that was only one inch long. So it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really make sense to go that route. So that's why I'm thinking now I'm gonna go with a one by six, which is three quarter inches by uh, five and a half inches. If I use three of them, I only have to cut off a little bit. So it still looks thick. It's not like one um, strip that goes across. That's, that's only one inch tall. So that's why I'm gonna go with the one by six. I'm gonna use, um, so it's gonna be three tall and then one is gonna be a little bit shorter than the rest of them. So now it's time to pick the right ones. So it's important to make sure that you're picking ones that are straight and not warped or bent. So you wanna take them, look at them on edge and down the end. Um, make sure that they're nice and straight before putting them in your cart. All right, time to get this stuff home and uh, get to cutting. So, we need to get the saw horses out, get something on them so we can put the chop saw down on it, miter saw, whatever you want to call it from wherever you're at, <laughs> and uh, mark our boards for the measurements that we need, uh, ergo the master plan, and uh, get them cut. Oh, 
always want to have something like an elevated surface to work on that just makes it easier. Oh god, that breeze feels delicious. Uh, elevated work surface, good, okay. So let's go over what I bought real quick, shall we? All right, so I bought two uh, one by six by ten. So they're ten foot long, six inches wide, six uh, and uh, well, in actuality, five and a half inches wide. And uh, it's by one, but in all actuality, it's three quarters of an inch um, thick. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these down to the lengths that I need. Now the sides of the bench are going to be. Um, 20.25 inches and then the front is going to be 36 inches so it's going to give me an overall dimension of 36 by uh, by 21 and god it is so hot out here but thankfully there's a little bit of a ha ah, a little bit of a breeze right there um, I also purchased a four foot by four foot kind of like they call them project boards or whatever from Lowe's. It's three quarter inch. Um, it's not super, you know, nice plywood, but um, it's just like, you know, just straight three quarter inch plywood. It's not OSB, it's real plywood. Um, but the reason why I didn't get super nice stuff is because what I'm gonna end up doing is putting some padding on top and stapling some fabric um, around it and so you won't even see that plywood at all. It's just simply gonna be the top that lifts up and so you can access the three reservoir containers that are in there. So without me sweating any more of my body weight away Let's get these things uh, marked, get them cut, and, um, and get going. If there's work worth being done, you need to jam a little bit. Hit tunes. So I got two 20.25s, I've got two 36 inches, so I need one 36 inch and four 20.25s. So here we go, we've got the, uh, the front pieces, one, two, three and 36 inch, and then 20 and a quarter, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got everything I need cut uh, to make the front and side panels. I'm going to leave the back uh, open. I'll cut another piece to go inside of the two um, side panels in the back. The front is going to be overly or overexposed. And then I also need to cut top. So more work to do. But I will meet you guys inside after I'm done cutting all of this stuff, get it all cleaned up, bring it inside, and we'll get to putting it together in the AC. So there's nowhere in the house that I can actually build this that wouldn't get sawdust all over everything and so anyways um, I can do the screwing together in you know the kind of like uh... Anyways The next step of this is going to be utilizing this um, Craig jig. It's not a Craig jig. It's it's meant for drilling pocket holes um, What pocket holes do for you is it allows you to screw things together edge to edge it allows you to really hide those screws so that other people don't see them. So, let's do it. So yeah, you know, one minute you're sweating your balls off, the next minute you're, you're drenched. So, I'm gonna wait it out. I kinda pulled everything up here so I can continue making my pocket holes and, um, and getting ready to put these things together. But it's going quite well. Actually, never mind. I did screw it up. So, there was no pun intended there. Uh, but yeah, I screwed it up. So, basically, if you can see, 
um, right here, I started to make these holes. Um, the ones that are longer are the ones that are right. These ones are wrong. So I circled them and put an X at them so I knew that these are the wrong holes. Basically, I drilled them in the wrong set on my, uh, on my jig. So this is what pocket holes do for you. It looks like a mess right now. Um, but once sanded down, that'll be completely flush. But what they're able to do is give you the ability to put all of that together without a backing board or anything like that. So the other side is nice and flat and uninterrupted. So it's just a nice solid looking board. So just gonna need to do this about, uh, well, once again for the side and then another one for the front and uh, then I'll screw them together sand them off, make sure they're nice and flush on this side, no, no spurs, and, uh, and then I think we're ready to bring it inside. Cool, so we got everything in the house and, um, and it's all sanded and clean and everything like that, so now I can, all I have to do is just screw it together and then upholster the top. So, the work continues. Look at that. I was talking to the camera and you came in. I know, because you said look at it. I was you talking to my that. peeps. You're wasting time. We're going to have to edit a lot out. Oh, it's easy. Alright, so. Like, take a look at that. Oh, hi. Yeah, I can see myself. I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> Don't mind my broken friggin' blinds. Thank you, children. All right, I think it looks great. Just need to put the uh, the top on it, and um, it's great. Actually, it's awesome because it will scoop right over that. So that is awesome. Job well done. So we need to give it a real test, uh, you know, of like strength, because I plan on like sitting on this thing and like looking at the tank. Look how close it is, right there. So, anyways. If we get up here, it's pretty good, right? Anyways. All in all, I think the build went very well. Basically, all that's left to do is put the, um, is to put the hinges on the, the lid and upholster the lid. No big deal, though. Um, I've already got uh, some memory foam down here and... Um, and my wife says she's got some fabric, so we'll get that whipped up, staple it all up underneath, and uh, should be looking good. And then, for down here, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and get this rock, um, you know, in some salt water, make sure that it's absolutely not leaching anything, and, uh, and then I'm gonna get my, my automatic water change and auto top off system ready to go. It's, it, it, the time is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. The time is upon us because once I get the rock in here, it's gonna, I'm gonna get, it's gonna get wet. It's gonna get wild and I'm excited. So anyways, uh, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you guys are inspired to, to build something for your own reefs. You know what? Thank you for watching this video. Give it a huge thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe, all things reefing on this channel. Keep it salty, keep it real, y'all. Y'all know what it is already. Peace.